Hi, it's me, it's Lucy, she, her. Nice to see you again. It's been a while. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I've not been making many videos, but turns out I have this like crazy thing called like being neurodivergent and having ADHD and also being transgender. And, and that's kind of just a lot of things that take up space in my brain. So I don't really have a lot of energy to make videos at the moment. And I'm, I'm also working a lot and stuff. But I really wanted to make a video today. Because it's been a long time. And I want to make something where... You know, the, the most recent video on my channel... Apart from the Trans Kids Deserve Better... Like, documentary thing I made... Was Pronouns in Bio. A film that I made about my transition. And... I spent like two years on making that film, and it was crazy and and very intense uh, editing and and everything. So, you know, I I want to kind of try and get out of that mindset of just like hyper editing. I mean that that film wasn't hyper edited, but like recently I've been working on a film called A Tight Warm Hug, which is kind of a follow up to Browns in Bio. Yeah, I just want to make something that's not like a professional film, like a documentary that's going to be shown in film festivals and stuff. I want to just make something casual, not edit it too much. I just want to make something fun. So this is what this video is going to be. And, you know, maybe 98% of the people have already clicked off because I started talking about my films and stuff. But whatever, I shouldn't care about watch time and views and whatever. It's about... It's about me. <laughs> it's about what I want to make. And I should make stuff that I want to make and have fun with it and not take it so seriously, goddamn seriously all the time. I need to just have fun. And yeah, so that's the vibe with this video. I want to just try not to edit the hell out of this video. I want it to just be you and me. And I'm talking to a camera, but I know you're there because you're watching this video. And I am Lucy. And you are the YouTube viewer. Thank you for being here. Today I want to talk about some films that I really enjoy. Because I love film and I make films. And I went to university to do film. And so I learned a lot about how to make films. And how to, you know, make them really cinematic and, and cool. And what lenses to use and what you know, what camera to buy and things, you know, you know. Um, so I, I feel like I want to try and unlearn a bit of that and try and make something that's a bit more simple, which is, you know, like this video, I want to make something simple and it's just me talking to a camera and it's just going back to like 2010 YouTube or something, you know, when it's just go talking to her camera and it's just... You know, it's not Mr. Beast, it's not YouTube Shorts, it's just... It's just simple and easy to watch, and it's not hyper-edited. Look, there was a bit there where I've just paused for like two seconds. Let's not edit that out. You know? Like... <laughs> hopefully other people understand the vibe that I'm trying to get across. Like, I just spend too much time on the internet, this is turning into a rant video. I will talk about films. I will talk about films because I appreciate film and I love film. And that's like my hyper, one of my big hyper fixations or whatever, you know, my special interests being neurodivergent. Um, so I want to talk about some films. So I've got a big, a big load of DVDs, a load of Blu-rays down by my side here. And I'm just going to pick stuff out. And then I'm just going to talk about it. And it's completely unscripted. That's another thing that I do. I, like, script my videos. Well, no, sorry. Well, the film that I most recently have been working on and is currently in film festivals and stuff, A Tight Warm Hug, that had, like, a loose script. Pronouns in bio was, like, completely unscripted. So I don't want people to think that was scripted or something. Because it is, like, a documentary. You can't script a documentary. Um, well, you can, but... It, I, I wouldn't do that, you know. Um, but anyway, I, I want to try and not script stuff 
and so yeah this is just going to be completely off the dome okay i know i'm rambling i know i'm rambling but this is what i want the video to be like i want it to be rambling i want it to be unedited and not caring i just want to make something okay so now that 99 percent of people have clicked off the video <laughs> i'm just gonna keep saying that um let's talk about some films come on guys recommend me films that you like recommend me films okay let's pick one out let's pick one out Okay, oh, this is a great one to start with. So this is, can you see this very well? It might be out of focus, but let's hope not. Portrait of a Lady on Fire. This is by, I'm probably going to mispronounce her name, Celine C Siama? Maybe, maybe not. Um, just off the back of this, it says that it's rated 15. Can you see that? 15 sexualized nudity. I really disagree with that. Um sexualized nudity claim on here because to me this film is really beautiful it's lesbians it's what vibe is it is it victorian era it's like 1800s or something vibe obviously in those times they're not really allowed to be lesbians and stuff honestly it's just vibes this film is so good and and i completely disagree with the sexualized nudity it's not sexualized this is just, this is just pure WLW, women, lo women loving women. This is just, this film is beautiful and I want everyone to watch this film. So this is a great film to start with, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Celine, the director, also did other films like Girlhood, um, but I wasn't a massive fan of that one. And Tomboy, I think Tomboy might be in this in this selection next to me. Um, Tomboy is really good as well, although there might be one scene where there's like uh, something a little bit dodge. If you've seen the film you might know what I'm talking about, but I think that film is really good as well, and it's kind of a bit slightly, well yeah, I see slightly, I mean it kind of just is a transgender film, Tomboy. Um, because, yeah, it's like a a young girl, I guess. But they're kind of a guy. They're kind of like a trans guy, but they don't really... I don't think in the film that they say that they're trans or anything. But it kind of is... a. It kind of just is a trans narrative. Because they want to just play with the other boys. And then they kind of get, like, outed um, as being a girl, in quotation marks. So that kind of just is a trans narrative. Um, but yeah, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, it's just beautiful. I, I can't really say much else other than that. You kind of just have to watch it. But yeah, that's probably one of the most beautiful films that I've ever seen. And yeah, it's just girls. Girls being girls. <laughs> okay, let's pick another one. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, this is Certain Women by directed by Kelly Wrightchart. Hopefully I'm saying her name correctly. But I've added a little post-it note on here that says night moves. Because um unfortunately well, as far as I've looked into it, not a lot of Kelly Wrightchart's films are actually available on physical media. I have uh First Cow and Certain Women, which is this one. Uh this is on the Criterion collection so it's like quite expensive I guess. It's probably not that expensive now, but when I got it, I think this was like 20, 30 quid or something, because Criterion is crazy mode, and they have loads of uh, Blu-ray special edition features and things like that. Um, but yeah, um, Certain Women is... I've not watched... I actually really need to re-watch this. Um, it's got Christian Stewart in it, and I remember relating a lot to Christian Stewart's character, because he seems like quite like lonely and stuff. Um... Yeah, she seems quite, like, lonely and sad in this film, and I, so I kind of relate it to that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, 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 I like this film. All of Kelly Whitechart's films that I've watched, I've really liked. She did one called, uh, I think it was called Wendy and Lucy, which is about a woman and a dog, and it's just, like, such a simple film. I really enjoyed that one, and I really liked first cow that made me cry my eyes out because there's this really beautiful scene 
of like the main character just being so nice to a cow um like he's milking the cow i think he's like stealing milk from the cow or something but he just talks to the cow in such a gentle way that it just made me cry my eyes out about this cow um and then yeah so the um the sticky note that was on this was night moves because that's my favorite film by kelly Reichardt. again sorry if i say saying her name wrong but yeah i've watched most of the films that i can actually watch from her because some of them are quite difficult to get hold of like physically or online um but i should i should re what i should what i should rewatch this and i should watch the ones that i've not seen by her um because her films are so good and what i really love about her films is they're just always like quite slow and so it's such a change up from like watching you know like youtube shorts watching youtube videos watching like mr beast-esque content i know mr beast is like cancelled to hell but like <laughs> you know like watching that kind of like hyper edited constantly like do 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 cuts 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 constantly it's just so nice to watch something like portrait of a lady on fire or night moves which you know does have stuff going on but it's also feels like slow burn type stuff um yeah and i really love night moves because it's kind of like a slow burn crime thriller type thing um following some environmental activists and it's kind of showing like what they're doing is kind of morally uh questionable uh i'm not gonna spoil it too much but yeah, I really love Night Moves, and it's got the guy who I am now blanking on what his name is, but he's the social network guy. Ke- uh... Oh no, I'm blanking. I'm blanking. You know who I mean? The the social the guy who's in the social network, the guy who's in Vivarium, the guy who's in uh, Zombie Land or something. Uh, you Jesse Eyes and. Anyway, let's pick another film. Night Moves. Please watch Night Moves. It mo- moves. It's so good. I saw it originally on Mubi. It's like a streaming service, you know, like your Netflix, except it's more like arty type films. I originally saw it on Mubi when I had like a free trial or something years ago. And then I've rewatched it a couple of times since, and it's honestly so good. Amy. Oh, yeah, this, this is really good as well. We were talking about like slow burn crime thriller. I mean, this isn't like crime, but like... A lot of these films have quite like sad stuff in them. This this film is very sad. So Amy is a documentary about Amy Winehouse, who is well was a really amazing singer. I love this film because it has so much like home video style footage in it. So it feels really personal in that way. It feels like sort of old YouTube vlog style with a lot of it and a lot of it is like just you know people's um videos on their phone or on like an early 2000s type camcorder of her performances and her talking and her just living her life it really shows the way that fame can change people and how horrible the press can be to people I really love this film. It's really long, but it's really, really worth it. Because it really, like, goes in-depth and shows so much, yeah, like, archive footage um, and music from her life. So, I mean, even if you don't really care about Amy Winehouse, I would still recommend this. Yeah, let's pick, a- let's pick another one. Joker. That's my impression of the soundtrack. The soundtrack for this film is so good. Well, I say the soundtrack, I mean the original score. Um, Because there is a difference between soundtrack and score. Some film nerd will say that in the comments. (laughs) Um, Yeah, the score is really good. Um, Yeah, this film... This film is one of those where... They just went crazy with this. We were talking about like press and stuff with with Amy, the film that I just talked about. But uh, 
the 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 media just went crazy mode with Joker, didn't they? Um, and, and <laughs> saying about how like violent it is and stuff and like incel vibes and things. But the thing is, there's there's like if you think if you think Joker is like violent and bad and bad and stuff. You have not seen many films, because there are films that are way worse than Joker, and I'm not going to get into that, like, just in terms of, like, violence, or showing, like, real violence and things, and, yeah, there's a lot of, like, disturbing films out there, and, and Joker, like, (laughs) as far as it goes, like, Joker is, like, completely scripted and acted and not real, but there are films out there which are real and have real bad stuff in that actually happened. Uh, and they actually did for the film. Anyway, Joker, I really love this film. I think a lot of it is because of the music. Um, but also just w- Joaquin is is amazing. And the Joker outfit and makeup is so iconic. And I love how gritty and dirty and disgusting... Gotham is in this film. I love the colors. I just love I just love the grit and the dirt. And and yeah, let's let's do another one. Grand Budapest Hotel. Oh yeah. Come on, I had to have at least one Wes Anderson in, in this list. Um Wes Anderson well known for being like everyone who is a film student's favorite film is probably a Wes Anderson one, or, like, their top ten fa- favourite films are just every film by Wes Anderson or something, because <laughs> he's done so many films. Uh, this this is one of those those films where it's kind of just, like, the state of cinema is so, like, Marvel Avengers, Infinity War vibe that I just love that films like this can still actually exist. I think a lot of the reason is because Wes has kind of got this group of really well-known actors who appear in, like, all of his films, basically. Like, he's got, like, a kind of recurring cast, and that's awesome to see all of these different actors in, like, throughout all of his different films and the different roles that they play in different films, and how the same actor can look so different in in one of his other films. Like, uh, Tilda Swinton is in The Grand Budapest Hotel, but I would have never known it was Tilda Swinton if you told me because she looks like 112 in this film. It's crazy. The makeup is insane. Um, The main reason I love this film is, again, like Joker, it just has amazing music. And when a film has amazing music, I love it. And another reason why I love this film is just because of the pink Grand Budapest Hotel. I also love how this film changes the aspect ratio a lot during it from like 4-3 to then the kind of like widescreen letterboxed uh, film ratio Um, yeah it changes the aspect ratio of the film a lot as it goes through different time periods and I just think that that's visually so beautiful and also makes sense from a narrative perspective to show the different changes in time because the the aspect ratio changes to what the kind of film aspect ratio was at that time it's it's it's, there's just so much you know and with Wes Anderson there's always so much thought put into everything I have no idea how he's made so many films because there is just so much thought and beauty and detail in every shot like every shot of this could be a poster and and should be a poster you know like they should just sell frames of this film and i would want to buy all of them because it's just so beautiful yeah i i i couldn't gush about the grand budapest hotel all day (laughs) okay we've still got so many films maybe we should just do like a couple real quick bound bound yes we are going in with lesbians again this is Bound. This is Wachowski. Wachowski sisters. Although, I wish... I wish, I wish, upon a fish, they could go back and just, like, change... Because the Wachowski sisters, uh, they're both trans women. I wish they could just go back and just 
change it. It says Wachowski brothers on the back, but they should have put Wachowski sisters. Arrow video. Come on, guys. I'm sure that this came out after they came out, you know. I guess I didn't vibe with certain parts of the story. Like, it feels like, you know, this is one of those films where the script is trying to be, like, very clever. And there's lots of twists and turns and things. And some of that's just a bit too confusing for my mush brain. My mushy brain. But it's lesbians, it's sapphic, it's pretty hot. Uh, am I allowed to say that? Okay, let's let's blast through a couple. What we got? We got Coraline. Coraline's 3D lenticular cover thing. Uh, Coraline is a freaking banger. Harry, Henry Selick. Don't even get me started on Henry Selick, okay? Because... Hmm... <laughs> There's a whole thing to be said about, like... Tim Burton, Henry Selick, because Tim Burton was was probably working on the Batman films when he directed or or well he didn't actually direct the Nightmare Before Christmas. Henry Selick did, but he, he owned the DVD of Nightmare Before Christmas. It always says it always says it says what does it say? Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, and yes, it's kind of made in Tim Burton's animation style. But, on the back, it says directed by Henry Selick. Okay, so that's just my, my small little rant to say Henry Selick deserves more credit. And yes, maybe Wendell and Wilde, I, I didn't really vibe with. It did have a trans character, which I felt was dealt with pretty well. Like, it wasn't... Yeah. I think that was dealt with pretty well. Um, and Key and Peele are obviously awesome. And make great guys just a couple of guys you know um and Coraline Coraline is so good and um yeah give me uh Dakota Fanning's voice please I would like that I would like to be Coraline voice uh yeah Coraline god damn that film is good god damn I love it it's so like spooky vibes oh so many good characters Come on, just watch Coraline for goodness sake. Being John Malkovich. Being John Malkovich. I've not watched this in a while. It's a very weird film. But I really like uh, Catherine Keener. She's really cool. She's also in... Oh, yeah, I've not got that in this, this film list. But I really like... Um, how Where the Wild Things Are. Where the Wild Things Are is really good. And I love the huge, like, puppets. And they don't feel like CG, even though some of them, it probably was CG. Being John Malkovich is a crazy journey. And this is another one of those films that's, like, the way the film industry is set up, this film should have never been made, but it was made. And that is just awesome to me, because it's so bizarre and I love that John Malkovich was just like totally down for the bit. So crazy in this. And there is probably one of the best films in cinema where there's just loads of John Malkovich's in a cafe all just chilling. <laughs> and it's just the best thing ever. Oh, God. Charlie Kaufman, Spike Jones. Oh, yeah, Spike Jones also directed Where the Wild Things Are. Yeah, I really like Where the Wild Things Are. The kid who's in that is really good. And feels quite relatable to me. And speaking of John Malkovich... Oh my god, I've still got so many films to talk about. Let's let's do it as a separate video, because this video is getting quite long already. I'll do a second one of these at some point, maybe. Uh, oh no, I've, now that I've said that, it's never going to happen. Johnny English. I have this film so many, so many times. This is a VHS. I have it on DVD and everything as well. And Blu-ray. I have so many copies of this film. Johnny English. That's got John Malkovich in. And his character in this is so good. Just like a French bad guy. And I love... I just love the cast of this film. Rowan Atkinson is always cool. What is it? 2003? It's early 2000s. So it's in that kind of... Um, it's in that kind of peep show transphobia vibe. <laughs> error, I think. 
But um, I rewatched this recently, and I don't think there's any transphobia in this, which is great. I know that's like a very low bar, but like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let's not get into that. But um, <laughs> uh, this film has aged pretty good. There's like, there's one or two bits of S A. Um, which are kind of played off as jokes, not great, but like apart from that, it's like pretty good, and and yeah, this is just, like this isn't my favourite film, it's just a film that I watched a lot as a child, because I kind of loved that like James Bond vibe, and I was really into like Mr Bean and stuff growing up, because my parents had all the Mr Bean, uh, like the original series on VHS, and then there was also the Mr Bean animated series and stuff, so I've just always liked Rowan Atkinson and and yeah I I this is this is a film that like I don't watch it and I laugh the entire time you know like it's not that hee hee funny comedy to me but I just enjoy it and I have a good time it yeah I guess it's just my 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 safety film that I can just watch whenever yeah I've just watched this film like 20 times literally 20 30 times okay so we've still got quite a lot but Okay, I'm just going to talk about one more that I highly recommend, and you need to watch this film right now. This is One Hour Photo. My, I mean, I've not watched a lot of Robin Williams films, um, but yeah, this might be my favourite film ever. Uh, one Hour Photo. Yeah, just it's got so many good shots in it. It's got reference to Evangelion for some reason, so there's like all the lore with that that you can dig into. Um, and... Yeah, it says on the back, like, psychological thriller. It's just totally not the vibe of film that Robin Williams would be in, because he's known for, like, Jumanji and stuff like that, which, I mean, I remember that being quite traumatic when they're all, like, sinking into the floor and stuff. I, I didn't enjoy that film as a child. <laughs> I think I only watched it, like, once, and that bit was just too much. But, uh, yeah, this is totally not the vibe of a film you would think, uh, or a character that you would think Robin Williams would play, but, yeah, he does it so well. He's just a scary guy in this film, and I love that. He's just so creepy and obsessive, and uh, I also love that this film kind of doesn't give you all of the pieces. Like, I, I looked up this film afterwards online, you kind of, kind of <laughs> one hour photo uh, movie explained, YouTube. Um, but yeah, there's there's some stuff in this film that's kind of like implied, and you kind of have to think about. And there's kind of part of the ending is at the start of the film. So I, I like that. I like that it's got kind of some things that are open to interpretation and some things that you do actually kind of need to think about. Um, yeah, I really like that. And yeah, it's got some beautiful shots in this film. I highly recommend that. And one more film. The last film I'm going to recommend. I have it. Uh, hear it. Oh, no, that's not it. I have it here somewhere. It's Submarine. I love the guy who's in the film, the main character. It's Oliver Tate. I just think he's great. And he's like... He's like so like just serious, monotone voice the entire film. He he just gives that kind of depression vibe that I'm sometimes going for. Um, and it's just a film about his life. It's also got Paddy Considine in it. Paddy Considine, Considine is a great actor. He's in a bunch of Shane Meadows films. And I love Shane Meadows films like This Is England. Dead Man's Shoes is brilliant. That's got Paddy in it. That's You should definitely watch that. Um, yeah, that it's just... Oh, so many good films. And Paddy's even... He's, he's even made films. Uh, I think he directed Tyrannosaur... And Journeyman, which I can see down there. Paddy is great. He's also in one of the Bourne films, which is just crazy cool. Uh, unfortunately, he, he gets killed. Spoiler, but <laughs> that's not... No, that's, no one cares about spoilers for that, I don't think. <laughs> uh, Paddy is just awesome. He's so good in Dead Man's Shoes. What was I even talking about? I was talking about Submarine. Oh, yeah. It's just a, a film that feels kind of all over the place. But again, again, the soundtrack, the soundtrack just gets me. It's got music by uh, the guy who's from Arctic Monkeys. 
The soundtrack is so good. The original soundtrack for Submarine. What is it? Pole Driver Waltz, I believe. And I think I have that album on CD somewhere, actually. Um, but yeah, the soundtrack is so good. Probably a lot of the reason why I like the film. The film is shot on film. The film is shot in Wales. Yeah, I just love the vibe of it. I just love the vibe. It's just very quirky and weird, and it deals with some quite dark things. Oliver's just kind of troubled in the film, and I love that, and I'm I'm living for that in a way. And the book is really good as well. I've not finished reading the book. Submarine was a book before it came in the film, like a lot of films. Um, but the book is, from memory, quite different to the film. Um, but yeah, I should I should keep reading that. It's been a while. I think Richard Aowardi directed it, which is so random. I think let's end it there. I've I've done a lot of rambling this video, but I hope if if one person watched this, then good for you. And I hope that you check out some of these films. There are so many films out there. I'd love to get recommendations of what all of you folks are into. Any films you've watched recently, even if they're bad, even if it's I watched The Room recently, or I watched Madam Web, or something, and you didn't like it. I love film, and I rate films on Letterboxd. Yeah, I don't know, I feel like my, my ratings of films are always a bit cringe. But you can follow me on there, you can rate my films, pronouns in bio on there. My new film will be out in the coming months, hopefully on YouTube. And then you can give that a little rating on Letterboxd, that'd be awesome. I love to see what people think of the things that I've made and rate them even if they didn't like it. I, I like to hear what they didn't like or if they liked it, what they did like. Or maybe they were just kind of meh. But I like to hear what people think and I love to talk about film. So I'm just going to end it here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sticking around. I love films. Let's watch films. Let's talk about films. Bye. Bye.